How's it guys? Uh, today we're going to be covering diamond rays. Uh, diamond rays also called butterfly rays or backwater butterfly, but everyone in South Africa generally refers to them as diamond rays. Uh, Gymnura natalensis, natalensis from occurring in Natal. Um, the diamond ray gets its name from its actual shape. It literally is shaped like a diamond, although if you do give that diamond to your wife, she's not going to be very happy. They a mottled color shape on the top. This is to blend into the sand. Um, and one of the key features, very, very short tail. A hundred kilo diamond will have a tail maybe, maybe that long with the spike on the top. Uh, diamond rays occur all along South Africa. They're actually an endemic species, which means they're only found in Southern Africa, nowhere else in the world. So it's a nice thing to have, a nice thing to be proud of. Um, they can attain a disc width, so across the wings itself, of two and a half meters plus and a weight of oh, about over 100 kilos, but I mean they can get up to 150. Although the most commonly caught size ranges from season to season, but they're normally about 80 kilos for a big diamond and about 50 kilos for the average fish. Now we get two types of diamonds. They are the same species, but we get a winter diamond and a summer diamond. The winter diamond follows the sardine shoal up. It's a lot smaller fish, they normally about 20, 30 kilos, and they follow the sardine shoals up. Now, targeting of these guys, follow the sardines, normally where the shad come out or have come out during the day, go throw a shad head at night, you're almost guaranteed to catch a diamond. Now, the summer diamonds, this is the most famous of the two diamonds, if you want, if you want to call it that. They are responsible for all the big smashes in the uh, postal competitions that we have for KZN Coastal Angling Union. Uh, Eight-man teams have recorded weights of three, three to five tons, maybe even more. And that's eight people fishing for eight hours, catching that many fish. So these, these big catches come from a place called Lumtanzini Wading Banks, uh, up far north. And it is thought that the diamonds aggregate here to breed. So they all get together there, breed and uh, give birth to their young. The diamonds produce very large litters um, of about 10, 10 to 12 uh, little baby diamonds, pups, and this is after a gestation period of 12 months, so it's a very long time that they actually gestate, so keep the babies inside of them, and then they're born in a large litter. The babies are born at a fairly small size. Um, we have been seeing them recently off Durban, which is always nice to see the little baby guys, makes good for the stock coming in. They mature at about a meter in width. In terms of the areas you're gonna be focusing on and the baits used to target these species, the bigger the bait, the better. If you can throw a whole bonny head, that's what you're gonna go with. It's a nice, strong smelling bait. It gets the, the smell going out and if you look, look along the beach, you're basically targeting these fish not near rocks, you're targeting them on sandbanks. Diamonds like to feed on the edges of the banks, either the back or the front, depending on the tide. And you're going to be throwing and placing your bait, ideally in a rip current between two banks, because that gets the scent out to a much wider area. Um, also, you get the bites a lot quicker, and it's just uh, almost a surefire way of, of targeting them. It's finding a hole with a rip going out between two sandbanks, three days of northeast wind and some hot weather, and you are in the money. Also, off-colored water is, is ideal. It, uh, the diamonds become a lot less skittish. They're not a very skittish fish normally, but in the off-color water, they feed extremely well. They just engulf all the baits. Um, and speaking of engulfing, their mouths are gigantic. I mean, a 50 kilo diamond's got a mouth probably about that size. So when it comes to actually removing the hooks, you can stick your whole hand in, almost up to your elbow if you really want to, to get the hook out. So you don't really have to worry about uh, cutting the trace off because you can generally get it back. Um, diamonds don't have teeth, they've got flat plates used to crush uh, any of their prey and you don't have to worry about them damaging you in any way, maybe a little scrape or something, but nothing too serious. In terms of precautions and handling, uh, remember diamonds are like all our other rays, they do have a sharp spine. It's coated in a protein poison, it's actually, it's got what's called recurved barbs. So the spine itself sits like that and the barbs sit facing backwards on it. So if it goes into your hand that much, it's gonna break off right there. Then you got that stuck inside of you and you can't, you can't pull it out. Uh, the protein poison hurts like hell, believe me, I know. Um, but to denature it, you put in, you immerse your hand in as hot a water as you can handle and get yourself to a doctor. 
Um, handling the species like all flatfish, never flip it onto its back. The weight, its own weight actually crushes its organs. Um, when you're taking it back to the water, grab your hand into its mouth, it's not going to bite you, and keep your body low. It's pointless picking it up and carrying it flat like that all the way back, it's going to damage its spine. So you want to keep your, your hand nice and low to the ground, pull it in, and it'll go back nice and easily. Uh, when you're unhooking it, you often get hit in the head by the diamonds. It's called a Port Durnford shower. Um, but yeah, it can be a lot of fun. Also, the, it's got little holes on the top of its head. Now these are, are called spiracles. It's the opening for the gills. It's not the gills itself. The gills sit further back. But if you put your hands into the spiracles, you damage the gills very badly and you can actually kill the fish. So keep your hands away from there. Handle it by its mouth. It's not going not gonna to damage you, not going to hurt you. Grab it there, pull it back, release it nice and quickly and go catch another one. Guys, tackle selection. This is perfect for all your big flatfish and sharks. Um, this is what I'd use. You want a rod that can throw a nice big bait, like we discussed. A bonnie head is, a, is quite a heavy bait. You're throwing that with a seven ounce cone sinker. Um, remember with flatfish, if you can get away with the cone, that's ideal because the spikes on a grapnel often poke the fish as it lands and it will scare off. So, saltist, 69 ounce, uh, grinder rod. 14 foot, throws a big bait, and it's got a lot of backbone, so you can be able to pull that fish as hard as you can. To that, because there's the chance of hooking very big fish and uh, getting stuck into some monsters, there's only one choice for me, and that's the Saltist 8000. It's got plenty of backbone, a drag that'll pull you off your feet, and it's magnetically sealed, so when it comes to wading the banks, which we often have to do to get the bait further out, you don't have to worry about water intrusion. So your reel's gonna last a lot longer and it's just gonna be a better choice than something that's going to, than a, a cheaper option if we can call it that. Onto that, 50 pound j braid breaks well above its strength. You're almost pulling, you can pull it 65 pounds, this stuff's still gonna handle. Um, you're probably gonna get quite a lot of line on there, about 850 meters. But yeah, 50 pound j braid, nice and smooth, casts very well. That's my choice. The ideal trace for a diamond skate or any of the big skates and sharks, circle hooks. We've now in the competitive angling have gone almost exclusively to circles for everything. It sits nicely in the corner, it sits, it's very nice and sharp. This, different to other circle hooks, it's slightly offset, so it sets a lot quicker than some of the circles and it doesn't, you, with the circle you're not going to hook, hook the fish in the gut, so you never have to actually worry about putting your arm that far in, but it's, it's what I would choose. Okay guys, so after a long awaited time, winter is almost finished. We've got summer coming up. That means everyone's getting excited, getting geared up. It's, it's flatfish season now starting. Uh, your bigger sharks, your rays, everything's coming to the coast, becoming a bit more popular. We're gearing up guys almost every day. So get your tackle ready, uh, polish up your traces and get out there and catch some flatfish.